That's what's happening. I mean, it's been happening for a long time. It depends on where you pull back to to get your perspective. One could say, looking at the universe in general, that this planet has been favored from the very beginning. That by a billion years ago, the discerning could tell that this was a planet going places. Uh, but certainly, by 500 million years ago, it was clear that this was a planet going places. Uh, one complex animal life form gave way to another. Uh, catastrophes, yes, but never catastrophes so total that the enterprise was wiped out. We know that 65 million years ago, a catastrophe, an asteroid, a planetesimal impact occurred on this planet. Nothing larger than a chicken walked away from that on this planet. A bad day, you say. <laughs> but were it not for that bad day, uh, our sto we would still be the egg-eating shrews at the edge of the reptilian garden party. Uh, these marvelous flowering plants chock full of psychedelic alkaloids, none of them would have existed. The flowering plants and the higher mammals all arose in the wake of this planet-scouring catastrophe. So, you see, uh, there is a, a built-in to the larger systems of nature an enormous, uh, what my mentor Eric Jansch used to call, metastability. They are metastable. They are not easily deflected. Uh, an event as large as a planetesimal impact basically only resets the evolutionary clock by a few million years. And then, in almost overleaping itself to make up for lost time, out of all of that catastrophe come uh, primates. Animals of such complexity and coordinated sensoria that they are uh, wonders to behold. And from them, and quickly, then come uh, abilities never before seen in the world of organic organization. Freely commandable languages, spoken languages, symbolic activity for the first time. Well, at that point, you know, even the academics believe human language is less than 40,000 years old. That means it's as artificial as the uh, dirigible or the uh, hypodermic needle. It's an invention of some sort within the confines of human history or at the beginning of human history. Recall in South Africa we have fire pits and stone tools two million years old. Those are not homo sapien tools, but they're the tools of homo habilis, the, preceder, the, the, the preceding ancestor uh, in the human line. Uh, my point is, we are caught up in a process of unfolding complexification that has now lodged in our species. We are its source at this point. At one point, its source was the geology of the planet. At a later point, closer to us in time, its source was all biological diversity. But as the novelty has increased, the domain of its expression has narrowed, and it is now confined largely to the human species. Oh yes, the rest of nature continues the slow unfolding of continental drift and gene mutation and transfer and so forth. But these things have now receded into the background as the human adventure takes center stage. Uh, so it's almost as though, in fact, this is what I believe, that we are not pushed from behind by the causal unfolding of historical necessity, but that we are in the grip of an attractor of some sort which lies ahead of us in time. And so we are not, as it were, following what the statisticians call a random walk across the temporal landscape. In fact, the temporal landscape is a canyon with incredibly steep walls, and we are only free to move within very narrow confines as the, the grip, uh, almost the morphogenetic intensity of the attractor at the end of time increases 
its penetration and its hold over our imaginations, our uh, city plans, our technologies, our religious ontologies, our medical strategies, so forth and so on. Something is revealing itself to us, through us, and as we get closer, the chatter of noise and static being given off of this thing increases exponentially because you know McLuhan said once he said we move into the future like a person driving who uses only the rear view mirror that's how we understand the future by driving in the rear view mirror all of our models of what lies ahead are based on inverted models of the past and the one thing you can be certain of is that won't do it because we can see a person standing in 1900 using that method would have been wrong about the late 1990s a person standing in 1600 using that method would have been wrong about the late 1900s and so forth and so on you cannot extrapolate from the future into the pa from the past into the future because the real nature of the future is its being on fish the thing in itself and that's what it's trying to reveal and so the whisperings that reach the ears of the channelers the visions that come through the hands of painters, sculptors, choreographers, musicians uh, uh, all of the felt presence of the invisible world is now incredibly pregnant with this message of transformation and the challenge for each of us is to streamline our language sufficiently that we may mirror this thing in a way that is both true to it and rationally apprehendable to ourselves.